you are noticing that God is shutting these churches down? Are you watching? Are you paying attention? And the more you try to keep these churches open, the faster God is closing them. <laughs> what makes it funny? You, no matter what, you want to keep these churches open and like a thread, like a piece of string in the thread of a, of a sweater, it's, these churches are coming apart. I'm going to tell you one reason why God is shutting down these churches. Take it to the bank. God has one message. All these messages these preachers are preaching, these are not the message that God wants you and me to hear or to have. If you have somebody in the room with you, look at your neighbor and say, I shall pass through this place but one time. That is how serious it is. By the blink of an eye, you might not be here next week, next month, next year. You too shall pass through this place one time and you shall not pass through here anymore. While you're here, there's one message God wants you to get. You say, what is the message? In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 7. It should read something like this. As you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The second point of scripture I want you to catch is found in the book of St. John, chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. The two scriptures I want you to catch. Number one, God wants you to learn what the kingdom of heaven is. That's one. Number two, know who God is and his son whom he sent. Those are the two things I want you to get out of this message. All right. If you're in the room with your, with your wife, if you're in the room with your loved one, grab your neighbor by the hand and let's pray. Father, we thank you now for this opportunity to speak your word to your people. I pray that it will be so simplistic they cannot miss it. And it'll be so simplistic when they go back and ask it, their pastor and share with their pastor. Their pastor can't mess it up and try to give them some false doctrine. And we thank you now. We praise you in the master's name of Yahweh Shai. Your Hebrew son's name, who they call Jesus, amen and amen. <laughs> you see how I put his Hebrew name in there? The Hebrews don't even know that his name is Yahweh Shai. Now you say, who are the Hebrews? The Hebrews are God's chosen people who God sent on the planet Earth. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, I'm going to describe to you who the Hebrews are, and then I'm going to move on to the message. Is that all right? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to obey and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all the nations of the earth. So here you see that God told a group of people, if you be obedient to my word, I'm going to set you high above. Not Everybody's not the same. I'm going to set you high above all the other people on the planet. Ten verses, real quick, describing one group of people who the Hebrews are, and then I'm going to move to the message. I shall pass through here but one time. Okay? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30, Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Verse 32, thy sons 
and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And then I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes for which thou shalt see. This is describing one group of people. You're going to have wives, but somebody else is going to lay with your wife. You're going to have sons and daughters, but somebody else is going to come and take your sons and your daughters. You're going to have, you're going to plant the vineyards, the vineyards, but you're not going to eat the grapes of them. You're going to build houses in your strange land, but you're not going to, you're not going to be able to sleep in them houses. Let's keep going. Verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all the nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. What is the byword that people call you Hebrews every time they see you? No matter what part of the country, no matter what country you're in, they have an N word, N-I-G-G-E-R. No matter where you are, Hebrews, that's what the people are going to call you. No matter where you are, let's keep reading. It's going to describe one group of people. You can't mix this up and say, well, maybe it's talking about somebody else. Keep reading. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger, people that are not in your community, are going to come in your community, and they're going to get high above you. They're going to own the grocery stores. They're going to own the gas stations. They're going to own the places where you buy your weave. They're the strangers that's coming in. They own the corner stores. You don't own nothing in your own community, not the gas station, not the place where you get those those one dollar cigarettes out of a pack. You won't own nothing. The stranger Hebrew is going to come in your community and own everything. Keep going. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. And in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until thou be destroyed. He's going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he destroys you. Who do you know had a yoke of iron upon their neck? Keep going. You probably think I'm mixing this up with somebody else. Let's keep reading. Verse 49. And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Who has a yoke of iron about their neck? And the nation that's over them is the eagle nation. The nation that's their enemy is an eagle nation that's over them. Let's keep reading because maybe you think you haven't got the picture in your head yet. Let's keep reading. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even until the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships by the way thereof, I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more, and there you shall be sold to your enemies for bondsmen and for bondswomen, and no man shall buy you. You're going to go into Egypt the second time. Well, the writings on the wall of Egypt show you who, who built Egypt, who the Hebrew slaves were. All of them were dark like me. None of them were pale faced. Those are the children of Israel. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2 says, Israel mourneth and they are black. We're talking about skin color. Tells you exactly who these people are. They're black in skin color. They were brought to an eagle nation. 
on ships with chains around their necks. So this Israelites, these Hebrew people, because they don't know who they are, they're in the Eagle Nation saying, Happy New Year, January 1st, because they, it was not taught to them that the new year is in the month of Abib, A-B-I-B. -B. Look it up, research it. That's when God brought the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. Here's the scriptures right here. I'll post them. And God said, this is the first month of the new year to you Hebrews, not January 1st, to you in the month, in the Jan, in 2022, it's April the 15th. That's your new year, not January the 1st. Because you don't know who you are, I'll tell you who you are. I'll open the book up and show you who you are because the schools are not going to tell you. The history books are their history, not your history. No more go along to get along messages. I told you God is shutting down these churches and the more you shut them down, these religious people are going to try to keep them open because it's, it's what they think is good and it's what they think they were taught. They thought they think they're supposed to go to church every Sunday. God, nowhere in your Bible tells you to go to church every Sunday. In fact, Sunday is the worship of the sun. The Roman Catholic Church changed the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. And to have you guys worshiping on Sunday, you want to be like Jesus. But Je the Bible says, here's the scripture. Jesus on the Sabbath day went to the synagogue as it was his custom. The Bible does not say he went to the church because the church was in Jerusalem. Now, in the synagogue is where the people would meet. There was a gathering place. The people would gather to get new information. Of course, they would read the Torah on the Sabbath day. It was just a meeting place. God said where two or three gather together, the Lord Jesus said it, Yahweh Shai, where two or three gather together, there I am in the midst. Now, the Hebrews would gather in the synagogue. It could have been a big open courtyard. It was not a church building. Here's the scripture. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Since the children of Israel would gather in the synagogue, which was just a meeting place, not the church. Now, well, now we are the church. We as a people are, church means the ecclesia, the called out ones. You've been called out of sin. You've been shown a new marvelous light and you're walking in it. Not a church building. Now, the place of the synagogue where the people would meet would go would be where Christ went. Not that he agreed that they were gathering this way, but he had to get out his, his sermon or his message to the world. What was his message to the world? As I told you in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 7, he said, go and preach. The kingdom of God is near. What do you mean? What does he mean by that? The kingdom of God is near. Your pastor ain't teaching. Your pastor mentions the kingdom of God. But Christ said, seek ye first. This is a priority. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these other things that you're seeking shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom of God? I know your pastor don't preach on it. It's priority. What is the kingdom of God? What does it take to operate the kingdom of God? What does it take to become a part of the kingdom of God? To become a citizen? Church has members. God, did, Christ did not come to give you a new religion called Christianity. Christ did not come to give you a new religion. You ask most people, what religion are you? Some of them will say, I'm a Christian. Christ did not come. Yahweh Shai Jesus did not come to give you a religion called Christianity. That came from the that came from a place called Antioch, where they start started seeing people who were uh, the, what they would say Christ-like, or they knew that those people were uh, disciples of Christ, and they were as a put down, 
said, you people act like those Christians in a place called Antioch. It was not a positive word. Now, since people are calling themselves Christians, what is a Christian? Christian, you have a duty and Christ didn't come to give you a duty, a duty to get to Sunday worship, a duty to come before him and you need music to come before him, a duty to pay offerings, a duty to do this and a duty to go to Bible study. You have a duty. Christ came to set us free, not to give you a bunch of duties and you have to do this and you have to do that. Once again, when they would gather in the synagogue, which is just a place of worship, it was a place where the, you got the new uh, the news of the of the of the week. Every Sabbath day, you would get the news of what the Torah might say. Not in Jerusalem, where the temple was. Synagogue was a meeting place. If you could see a big garden, it was a meeting place. They never met on a Sunday. The apostles went house to house, spreading the gospel of Christ and the kingdom of heaven. They never had a Sunday worship, not in your scriptures. On the first day of the week, they went house to house and learned the scriptures one from the other. There was not a mediator standing on a pulpit. You won't find that in your scripture of the mediator stood on the pulpit orating to the members as they sat there and could not ask questions. But in the synagogue, you were able to ask questions back and forth as the prophet Isaiah said, come let us reason together, saith the Lord. Not one person speaks and no one questions them because they're the almighty pastor. That's not Bible. Now, let's go further. God said, I want you to learn what the kingdom of heaven is. I'm gonna give you 10 scriptures and I want you to go back and you study them. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this is the way it reads. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added Unto you. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. St. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Can you see the common denominator? There's one word, three words God wants you to catch, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where God actually sits in the throne room. The kingdom of heaven is his territory that he governs. Here's the scripture. Once again, I told you that God rules the heavens. He made man and put man on the earth and said, man, you rule the earth, have dominion over it. If you ask a hundred Christians, why are they on the planet earth? They'll tell you they were here to worship. That's not what your Bible says. Your Bible says you were put down here to have dominion over the planet earth and you have lazy pastors who get out of bed and go sit at the church and won't hold a nine to five job. That's not God's will. God said if a man doesn't work, he should not eat. Now, the purpose of man is to dominate the planet, to rule the planet, to have a job. The Bible says, and here's the scripture, he didn't even let the fields grow. He didn't let the, the herbs come up out of their seed because there was not a man to till the ground. Man was not here yet to work the soil. Once man got here to work the soil, then God lets the seed produce after itself and then there became a harvest. So some people teach that people were here before Adam. The Bible says 
God didn't even let the herbs grow. He didn't even let the rain fall because there was not a man on the planet Earth yet. A man didn't get here till Adam got here. So whoever's saying that there were men here before Adam, that's not Bible. Let's stick, stick with the book. The book says he didn't even let it rain. He didn't let it the, the, the land cultivate because man was not on the planet Earth yet. Our number one priority on earth is not to worship. He has angels for that. Like God won't get glory unless man worships him. He's still God whether you worship him or not. Man was put on the earth to work. W-O-R-K. Any man who's sitting in the church building, well, my job is to preach. That's not your job. I, my job, I'm a soul, I'm, I'm full-time pastor. That's not your job. Man was put on the earth to work. Here's the scriptures. Was put on the earth to work, not to worship. Christianity tells you God can't wait for us to get to heaven. If God wanted us to get to heaven, he wouldn't have created healing, would he? He said, I sent my word to heal you. He heals us so that we can stay on earth longer to work. Not to hurry up and get to heaven. Y'all know this is y'all know this is good. <laughs> As I close, remember the, the number one thing God wants you to seek the kingdom of heaven and the king's righteousness. The king has laws that he put down here that we can get along with each other. How humanity would get along with each other. Don't sleep with another man's wife. Don't have no other God before me. Uh, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. And your pastor tell you we're not under the laws no more. That is funny because Christ said, don't think that I came to do away with the laws. Don't think I came to do away with what the prophet said. Heaven and earth shall pass away before one jot or tittle of the law shall pass away. Heaven and earth got to disappear before anything in the law disappears. Don't think I came to do away with it. Christ said it. So the Bible says that Christ is the end of the law. All of the law points to Christ. He's the king. Thou shalt not steal is because the king said it. Thou shalt bear, not bear false witness against your neighbor because the king said it. Everything point. He's the end of the law. He's the bottom. The bottom. He's the bottom line. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Everything points to Christ. Now, the law was your schoolmaster. The law was written on tables of stone and men could not keep it. So God said, remember the Hebrews we talked about earlier, to Israel. Israel was split into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. To Israel, Hebrews 8 and 8, and to the house of Judah, the southern kingdom. No longer are you going to have to go to these temples and have somebody teach you what the scriptures say. I'm going to take the law and write it on the tables of your heart. And then the Holy Ghost, who bears witness of Christ, is going to tell you, don't do this. It's on your heart. The scriptures say, don't do that. Don't do this. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. The Holy Spirit is called the counselor. The counselor is the same terminology as lawyer. The lawyer is not so that you can stop keeping the law. But the lawyer is now on the inside of you that you can understand why to keep the law. What does the law mean when you get ready to go this far out of bounds and don't go over there out of bounds? The lawyer says, oh, it's written on the tables of your heart. Do this. Don't do that. Does that we get a clear understanding. So as I close, get to know God. The father who sent the son. That is his will. The son is the king of kings and the king of glory. It is not God's will that you would keep congregating in these churches every Sunday and then live a different lifestyle Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, opposite of what you're reading in the books. The number one Accountability for a man is to give his life to Christ and learn the ways of God. The number one assignment for a woman is to have a covering 
Usually it's her husband or her dad who gives this woman to this man. Her husband, she's accountable to her husband to get the word of God from her husband. She never is supposed to leave. She's out of order. If she leaves her husband's covering and goes and gets spiritual directions from another man, her husband is her covering. That is the will of God. Not to go someplace else. She's out of order. But this is the tradition that has been handed down in the churches and that's why the churches are 80% women, because it's in a woman to, to learn from a man, to lean to a man, to go get directions from a man. But she's out of order if she does not get them from her husband. God said, Christ said, if a wife wants to learn anything, go do what? Ask your husband, not leave your husband and go get directions. You're out of order. As I close. I want you to learn what the kingdom of heaven is. All these messages are going to be pointed towards the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is a person first, the king. And then the king's will, desire, uh, his attitude, his culture is spread out through the administration of the citizens in his kingdom. And no matter what you did, no matter what you have said, Christ wants you to know that you didn't choose him. He chose you before the foundation of the earth. He knew you were going to do this. He knew you were going to do that. He knew how far away you were going to turn from him. Yet he chose you, his unfailing love, his grace, his mercy. The king chooses who's going to be in his territory. The king chooses who's going to be his citizen. You don't choose the king and you cannot elect a king. A king is born a king. The preachers got it mixed up and messed up the scriptures and thought when Christ said you got to be born again, they started preaching messages on that. That was not the message. The message is the kingdom of heaven. When Christ had a conversation with a man by the name of Nicodemus in the middle of the night, Nicodemus wanted to know, how do you enter into the kingdom of heaven? Christ said, you're a teacher of the law. You don't know this, Nicodemus. There's two births. The first time a man comes into the world or a child, the woman's water breaks. That is the first, first birth. You got to be born of water. The second birth is you got to be born of spirit. You're born into the kingdom. So you're born of water and spirit. The first water is when the woman's water breaks. That does not mean you got to go get baptized. That's not what that scripture means. It had nothing to do with being baptized. First birth. They're talking about being born again. How do you be born again? Can a man enter his mother's womb a second time? No. The first time is the first human birth. The second time you have to be born of spirit. We got some more for you. We're going to unravel and rip up what the church taught you that was wrong and give it to you in its proper perspective that you might come into the kingdom of heaven. You might serve the king and get to know his the laws and his statutes and his commandments for your rights. So your rights in the kingdom, when you pray, you go to the king and says, king, you says in your word, in this chapter, in this verse, Healing is the children's bread. You recite back to him what he said. Once the king says it, it's law. It can't be taken back and he can't take it back himself. That's why you need to learn the laws, the statutes, the commandments and the decrees the king spoke. You recite it back to him and those are your rights. As I close, tune in next week. We got some more kingdom of heaven for you. Hit the subscribe button. God bless you.